So, Eric, you've got yourself a, a little treat from last week from Dalton. I did. I know. So we, um, everybody, I don't know if we talked about this before, but this is what you call a whoop. And a whoop is a uh, fitness tracker, does heart rate, all these different things. So anyways. Uh, I got the whoop. I got it. Thanks, Dalton. Yeah. Beauty. We Dalton and I had a conversation because Eric was hemming and hawing about, uh, because he saw our stats and how it was tracking everything. And it's it's amazing. Um it keeps us in the lines yeah. a little bit more. So we have our, it's an app that attaches to your phone. It gives you your sleep. It gives you all the details. You can look it up. It's awesome. But it's mostly in regards to your heart rate and your um, heart rate variability, how your heart functions, and it keeps you in line, tells yeah, you if you're in good recovery, shape. Recovery, strain, calories. Re- recovery, strain, calories. And it's a to the T, yeah. which is funny. So anyways, let's go to that in a second. So yeah. Eric was eyeing this thing up and – uh Really interested because you got to understand Eric's an engineer and he's a fitness fanatic and he's a nutrition. He, he he's done all kinds of he's a, he's his own lab rat where he's uh, you know d- measures his own food and does all kinds of different things to see. So he was like he saw this app and he he knew it was good because he did some research on it before and uh, so he was looking at it and there's a, but the thing is is there's, there's a cost there's a price to pay with them like the cost it's not totally expensive but it's expensive enough to make a that you got to make a conscious decision. Yeah. So he was flipping a coin, and Dalton and I were talking. And Dalton is just such a beautiful guy. So Dalton, um, one of the things he just did, he just bought him his dad, uh, Harley Davidson, for Christmas. And he says, first time he's seen his dad actually break down and cry. He said it was so nice for him, right? He's got a heart of gold. So Eric came in. Dalton and I were talking one day, and he said, I, what do you think? Should we get Eric one? And I said, yeah. So... Funny thing was we were working out and uh, Eric was looking at our stats. He goes, I got to get one. I'm ordering one. So I lied and I said, Eric, don't do it yeah. yet. Don't do it yet because there's going to be a huge, huge sale in three weeks. Yeah. <laughs> so just trust me, it's going to be like a huge sale. Yeah. So it was two days later, Dalton. I wasn't there when Dalton gave it to him, but Dalton ordered it, brought it in and made your day. Yeah, it was, it was uh, it's such an Eric tool. Oh, it's yeah. just uh, like, I'm just like, I'm a numbers guy. Yeah. I love seeing metrics and, and measuring things that I'm doing, like you said. And for me, I mean, like I just finished school. I'm in a position, like you're saying, it costs money. Right. And, you know, for some people that are in their, in their ways, whatever, it, it doesn't seem, it's not much, right. You can afford it. You can pay cause it's a monthly thing too. And for me, it, it wasn't an easy thing to just rationalize, especially now because there's not a lot of work and all this stuff going on. Right. So it was, uh, I was shocked actually, because like, who am I to Dalton, right? Like we hang out in here every day for a couple hours and, and whatever, but, uh, he didn't need to do that. And it's, uh, you're right. I was, I was looking at you guys using it just like, man, I want to get one of those so bad. And I showed up Saturday morning, he comes in, he, and it was funny because he came in, it was a Saturday morning, a couple, maybe two weeks ago now. Yeah, it was. And, uh, he walks in and he went and turn the music down i was in the middle of my workout and he went and turned the music down and i looked at him like what are you doing you jerk like yeah. i'm trying to work out <laughs> like why are you turning the music down so he's like come here for a sec and he threw me the box and i was like i didn't get it like i didn't get it i was like oh like did you get another strap like are you sh-? and then he tells me it was for me and i was like come on and and not only did he buy the strap he paid for an 18 month membership for me too I know. and so now the three the boys are all are buzzing in the gym. We we were making comparisons and and checking each other's metrics out and and we talked about it a bit last week too when we recorded or t- whenever that last one was. Yeah. And it's just an awesome tool. Like it's just an awesome tool to keep yourself keep yourself accountable to give you actually some like tangible numbers. You yeah. can you can put some numbers to the things you're doing, right? Yeah. You're trying to you know if one thing for me is like heart rate variability, which I'm sure a lot of people don't know what that is and it doesn't really matter, but that's a metric that I want to improve. And I didn't even know that that was may- maybe an issue like I had no way of measuring that at all and now I'm seeing it and I'm starting to improve on it already so these are, it's just another tool that you can use to to stay on top of things you yeah. know a funny thing was uh Dalton goes Andy because you're so Eric's a techie like he's graduated in electrical engineering he had, where where was the one interview you had was it SpaceX or Tesla 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 yeah, Tesla and he's like nah um he wants to work with me which is uh which is awesome because we got a great thing going here. So yeah. But uh, he wants to work with me. But so anyways, Eric or uh, Dalton goes, Andy, you had to see this. Gave him the thing. He was pumped. By the time he went into the off, he went into your office for like 
three minutes. He had an account set up. He had it set up on all the things that he had, and it was ready to function within five minutes. He didn't even <laughs> miss didn't miss one rep yeah. or one set of his uh, his workout. Yeah, he was, yeah, was ready yeah. to go, so it was pretty cool. Yeah, but uh, what's your thoughts on this? So this is uh, pretty cool to me because, as I said before, it's like I try to have as many things. Like I've had, even though I own a gym, I have a membership. Even though I have a membership, I have a bike at home, and I have all these different things to keep me on track for fitness, keep me healthy all the time. What, did, what have you found with this that's been the greatest thing? For me, it's I love our little group, and you could go in any group you want. I don't like doing that because, I, you know, who cares? Um, I don't like putting myself out there too much, but I like our group because we're always, like the competition piece is there. Like mm. there's not a chance, so not that anyone would necessarily know what the strain is or the calorie count is what it's supposed to be, but if anybody out of the three of us walked into the gym the next day after a sleep with – less than a thousand calories burned through working out we'd probably kick kick each other out yeah 100 yeah. percent. so we're constantly throughout the day like you like the like the accountability part of it i love it yeah and i know like it's, i don't know if it's ca- accountability it's just like because we're all going to be there at the end of the day more or less anyways yeah, yeah. but i like it because it's like we're trying to push makes it competitive a little bit more yeah that's what i like about this thing too yeah i think for me um I do like that, but for me, it's all about like the objectivity of it, right? So you can't lie, you can't hide. Yeah. Like yeah. your numbers are your numbers, right? And well, that's that's the thing that I like the most about it because, like you said, you have a bad sleep, yeah. it'll tell you. Yeah. You didn't work out as hard as you should have, it'll tell you. You didn't. You worked out too hard, it'll tell you. Yeah. Like there's no, you can't hide from it. And obviously, like this, it's a pretty new technology, so it's not. Uh, necessarily the like to a t accurate but it's the most accurate thing that i've ever seen or heard of yeah and so it's it's just a nice even if it's if it's not consistent it's consistently inconsistent based on your body right yeah. well, so. i think it's pretty close though because i've I seen too. a lot of things I, yeah, this I is too. this is the best i've ever seen yeah we were talking before we get into uh our hockey talk but this is actually it's related to hockey so who cares yeah, go ahead. um we we're talking this morning about uh how accurate the calorie count is on this and if you if, if people were to see how hard we work out and how dialed in we are with our eating like we just are yep. um what a what a gap in what people would think including me and you we were talking about this the gap that what you think you burn and what you think uh the calories you need to maintain your weight what a gap like when like this is it gives you the actual numbers so eric and i were talking about I think it was this morning about how off we were saying that to maintain, like most people say, what's, what's the minimum, what's the minimum, uh, calorie n- n- necessary for a human, not 1800, right? Thousand, 1200. Well, it, it depends on, but you know, the standards that if they you say were, if you were, if you were, uh, like an av- the average female probably because they require less than men it'd probably be maybe like 12 12 to 1500 calories okay. 1500 would be pretty high so probably around 12 would be like their if you just sat on the couch and did nothing for yeah. a full day 1200 calories probably yeah. okay so w- the point of this is a lot of people have no idea what they're eating right so they could be eating and they think that they can estimate oh yeah i, I kept my day light i'm not full i only had this this and this but when you add up all the things that go into a meal how fast that can add up to like 2,000, yeah, oh yeah. 2,500, 3,000 calories. Like yeah. like easy. You, it just having cream in your coffee, yep. little things like that can add up in the calories. So we did. I think we did a talk about overestimating and underestimating things, right? Yeah. And that's an o- underestimating how much you eat. So in order to stay lean or fit for hockey or just an adult that wants to look decent, to offset that is exercise, obviously. You have to burn calories. So most people would think that going for an hour walk would burn a ton of calories and it burns some, but I did a walk with my wife the other day and I'm like, wow, like that's a bad bang for the buck where I can go. So anyways, at the end of the day, true calorie counts, like with this, I overestimated how much I burned because my bike, like, which is great, uh, my echelon bike, it's about twice of what I get on here. Yeah. Which is fine if you're doing that because, I mean, you're going to work hard and all that stuff anyways. But to get the accurate ca- account, I realize that that's why it's hard to keep weight off. If you're, like, if you're trying to do that, if you're trying to stay lean and you're yeah. not exercising, it's like virtually you can't eat much. Oh, or yeah. you have to move a lot because you're totally, totally underestimating the calories that you eat and you overestimate overestimate the exertion that you put into exercise. Yeah. Because we go – sorry to cut you no, off no, again. Ahead. It's my podcast, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice shirt, by the way. Yeah. Um, but uh, 
We over. What did I say? We overestimate what we you eat. Under underestimate what you eat. How much you eat. Right. Yeah, I don't know what my point was after that, but anyways, I guess yeah, I forget what I was gonna say. Well, I w- no, I was gonna say that if just to kind of paint a picture, I'm like you said when we started talking, lab rat. I'm a self experimenter. I like doing s- just to s- to see, like, because I like the metrics. I like the objective measures, and I'm someone who I track my food basically every day. My like minor exceptions sometimes, but almost every day I'm I'm tracking pretty much to a T what I'm eating calorie wise. Um, I'm tracking what I'm working out, how I'm working out. And before I had uh, the whoop guy, and it sounds like we're doing a sales pitch here. Yeah, but it we're sounds really, like it, but we're not. It's we're really awesome not. It's just though. awesome. Um, so for me, I thought until we, like we were talking about earlier, I thought for me, maintenance level would be about 3000 calories a day. So I'm six foot, maybe a little over six foot and I'm 200 pounds, right? Plus or minus, depending on what time of the year. And I have a relatively large amount of muscle mass for my size. So I would think that 3000 is about right. And I weigh myself every morning, pretty much. I'm like pretty on top of it. And what I found when I started wearing this was that if I just have like a, a good workout, not, not crazy, I'm not doing two days or anything. If I have a good workout and then just my regular movement throughout the day, maybe some mobility, whatever, I'm only hitting like 25 or 2,600 calories yep. in the day, yep. right? So for me to yeah. think that that's, I'm, but you, but on a, on a day that you're not working out like really extremely hard, you're still working out hard. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a big bang for your body. Right. Yeah. So so same here. I'm at, I'm about the same. So even for somebody like me who tracks everything to the to a T, if you don't have something to look at, if you don't have a tool that's actually measuring, like I'm me, I'm off two to four hundred calories. Yeah. Right. Science. So right. yeah. So I'm I'm off and I'm tracking everything. Yeah. Right. So I was off two to 400 calories. That means that when I think I'm at maintenance, I'm actually in a surplus. Yeah. Right. So it's easy to see if someone who has, and I know food, I know about food. I know how much, how many grams of protein are in things, carbs, fat. I know all this stuff and I was still off. So if you're somebody who has like no context, you have no idea how much, how much, uh, how many calories are in certain foods or what kind of macronutrients are in certain foods. It's really easy to see how, that can get out of hand and how you can yeah. lose track and not know what you're doing and then put on weight and, th- and then think that you're doing the right things, but it just can't come off. You know, it's yeah. really easy to see how that can happen. Yeah. Another really neat ob- observation I had was, uh, so we decided, okay, so first of all, I want to qualify this because we, Dalton and I were sitting, just to clarify again, Dalton Prout, NHL, our buddy, works out with us every day. Um, we were sitting in my office and he guessed – he said we were talking, and I, I forget. I was talking about his calories. I said you're burning them. You go through calories like crazy. Now, so we talked about our weight. So he guessed my weight, and he was way off. So we decided to do. It's so okay. I'm gonna just be honest. So I I, I weighed. Uh, I, I roughly weigh. I'll do it this way. He said, uh, "What do you, what do you weigh, Packer? One ninety? So I laughed and I said, man, I haven't been 190 in about 20 years. So he goes, really? Like, what, what, how much? And I said, I'm, I sit around 217 to 220. And he was like, wow. He goes, you would never know. I go, oh, yeah. He was like, because I'm a ball of muscle, right? So, <laughs> no, like, but I, I'm, I'm a thick, muscular yeah, guy. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, it's very deceiving. But, uh, but I'm not dumb enough to think that I, there's some fluff that can come off. Mm-hmm. But I just told him, I said, it's really hard. I said, I don't know if it's because I'm 52 years old. I said, I work out. No one can work out harder. Well, but you can't work out harder. You can't eat much cleaner than me, consider, and considering the lifestyle, having kids and a family and stuff. Like, I eat 95% very, 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 very clean. Mm-hmm. So he goes, well, what do you, what do you think? Uh, he goes, what do you think I weigh? So I said, oh, I, he, he guessed about low 220s. I said, no, way more. But... There was just from looking at him. <coughs> Excuse me. So basically, we came up with uh, let's let's just do something this month and do uh, Operation Fluff Off. So the three of us, well, no one really needs no one needs to lose weight, but we're just gonna try to trim down a bit. We're taking one month um, to trim down, and uh, which surprised me. Like Dalton, when he weighed himself, he ended up being two thirty, and he doesn't look it at all. I mean, he's lean. Oh, he's, but he's just lean, a man. jack yeah. piece of muscle, and he was like, "Wow!" And I said. See the difference when you're not playing hockey. The to- the toll that that game takes on you, like they're burning and burning and oh, burning. Yeah, and he man. didn't. He thought he was like about 220 pounds, but he was 230 ripped. Um, 
that's how much the the game just stepping away because he hasn't played for a while. Mm-hmm. The activity level, the burn, the calorie burn that you're getting every day is so much higher. Yeah, that you can actually keep to, to two two twenty two fourteen with that guy. Oh yeah. Well, the other thing too that we we were talking about this day too is so proud to be in two thirty. My guess, just looking at him, I don't actually know. I didn't measure, but he'd probably be around ten percent body yeah. fat. Maybe less. Yeah, maybe like less. 10, let's say ten. 10. Well, he, the thing with the thing with Proto, though, we talked about this the other day too. Is he he hides his fat in places where yeah. it's hard to see, yeah. so it might be deceiving. But anyways, yeah. let's say he's ten percent, yeah. and then for me, I'm probably twelve thirteen right now. Yeah. So I'm today. I was two oh five. Yeah. And he today is two thirty. Yeah. Okay. So for me to be as lean as Proto, I'd probably be around like one ninety. Yeah. Maybe a little less. So yeah. that means if I'm one ninety and he's two thirty, he's got forty pounds of lean tissue on me. Yeah. So that that. 40 pounds is burning yeah it's metabolic and yeah we've we've looked we've looked at at this a few different times where it's like man it literally looks like Proto hasn't done anything today and he's hitting 3,000 calories <laughs> yeah. already you know yeah. and it's that's why it's it's interesting like you can't it's so hard to compare yourself to other people and, yeah. and now that you have something that's giving you a metric something that you're actually looking at numbers you're actually looking at you can really see yeah. why you really can't compare yourself to anyone except yourself but Bo- like body types are different genetics are different like what you're what your capacity is uh, yeah. metabolically is different. Like ev- all these things yeah. are different. So it's, yeah. you really, you can't, you can only measure no, it to it's yourself. A sel- it's a self image test too. Oh yeah. Cause it, it would be easy to go in here and say, okay, like just beat the sh- shit out of yourself at the end of the day to make sure your calorie counts are equal to everybody else's. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's a pretty neat thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. It's great. Yeah. So enough about that. I think, yeah. um, you know, interesting is, um, I'm going to talk about a book I read over the holidays and we're redoing this podcast because we have better sound system right now. So we're kind of redoing one that we did that we didn't publish. Anyways, uh, over the Christmas holidays, I read a book called The Slight Edge. And funny thing was, as I uh, every time I would talk to or I'd get invited to talk to people, one of the things that I would talk about is um, is I used to call it just do a little bit more or just give 10% more in everything. And you'll have massive success. And it kind of works with this, with, uh, with this book. And I was actually writing a... Uh, uh, before we got up here, I was just writing a, a newsletter or an email to my one of, to one of my bigger groups about being in the COVID ninety nine. How you know, like how hard it is. I, no, how I commend any kid, anybody actually that can stay motivated through this. It's hard. It's just hard, you know. And so as I started off my email, I was like, didn't want to send a redundant email about. You know, just keep trying, work hard. Just the stupid, not stupid, but the words that they're hearing all the time that they're sick of hearing. So I wanted to write something that was decent. So I was was putting together something about, you know, living in the now, living in the presence and doing daily habits so that you are ready. And uh, because we will be. Um, And it came, I was so, this kind of all tied in together today. But I used to talk to kids all the time or groups or people would ask me about myself. They find me interesting sometimes. And I say, it's really like, life is actually kind of simple. Whether you're a hockey player, whether you're an accountant, you're, whether you're an uh, engineer, and, and you understand this because you always have these daily habits. But I was told kids that if you want to actually get do you know get in shape, you don't have to spend hours and hours in the gym, and, and you don't have to do life-changing, big metamorphosis uh, uh, things. All you have to do is the same, like little things every single day. If you do little things like 10% more than what any, anybody else does or 10, 10% more than what you're doing right now, you're going to have massive success. If you And I told the kids, if you want to actually walk into a room and have an intelligent conversation with somebody, you don't have to go to, 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 to the greatest university in the world. It's just a simple, simple habit of reading or putting good information in your brain 10 minutes a day. And if you can do that over a short, for a long period of time, daily habits, you become one of the smartest guys in the room that can talk about anything. My son always asked me, he, oh, he ordered a book the other day. I was so happy to hear that. I forget the name of it. He heard about something on a podcast and he asked to order the book. I was happy. Sick. Yeah. Um, my son always asked, why do you read so much? Why do you, like, you're always putting stuff in your head. And I said, because, like, you never know what this book is or this podcast is going to lead to as conversations, as you know. Um, you want to be a millionaire. You want to be a millionaire. You don't have to have a million dollar business. You just have to take a small piece of your income every every week and put it away and let compound pound interest do the work and every anybody can be a millionaire it's it's just a small percentage of 10 i used to call it a 10 percent rule just give me 10 percent 
Everything you do, just give 10% and, and on a daily basis, and you're going to be a very successful person. You want to lose weight, like we're talking about earlier in the podcast. You want to lose a little bit of weight. You don't have to, you know, the biggest thing is people eliminate everything. And then they create this huge desire to eat donuts and cookies and fall off the wagon. But if you do an elimination diet or an addition diet, like instead of a sandwich with the bread, have, um, I don't know. <laughs> I just, that was my worst example yeah. but instead of having the bread replace it with yogurt or something like that and and get your mind it's, anyways my point is it's not it doesn't have to be massive you don't have to go from eating a steak and potatoes every day to eating salad and that's it small things make all the difference so over the holidays I was just taking the time which and I was very happy with myself this holiday because I kept myself away from bad food and and you know, I had a few drinks here and there, but it wasn't like the normal two weeks of Christmas. So I was really happy, but I was able to consistently work out, daily habit that I've created for a long period of time. And I was able to put the time into my brain every day. So one of the, one of the, I read a couple of books that I've read before that I, I just wanted to get some more, uh, just to get that deeper insight on it. Yep. So the one book was called The Slight Edge. And basically what The Slight Edge is talks about business, life, and daily habits that create massive success. So, uh, it, and it's so simple and it's so good. So like I said, you're a person that can contribute to this big time because I watch you on a daily basis, manage a schedule that was ridiculous and do little things every day that add up. So I think, again, it's not the big things that you do. It's, it's the small things every little, every single day the mundane things, the, the things that seem like they don't matter, but they actually do. And um, the, the, the comment and the, the thing that he says in this book is like, it's easy to do, but it's also just as easy not to do. Yeah. And if we look at how, as just as, because uh, we're going to stick to hockey here, as if you look as a hockey player, there's so many things that are easy to do and easy not to do. And, you know, I was just, in my email that I was sending out to my group today, it was, you know, it's the power of now. It's it's see because it's, 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 tough times are going to be revealed. Like your your mental toughness is going to be revealed when things are tough. Things are tough right now. This is this is um, um, the COVID ninety nine. It's uh, we don't know when hockey is going to be back. We don't know when life's going to be back. I mean, we can kind of guess, but it's it's been a roller coaster of emotions. So going through this roller co- coaster of emotions, I give any kid that plays hockey credit. Like I, and I, I'm so sincere about this because it's hard to have the motivation to continue. I mean, it was. I understand doing it for a week, the workouts, and you know, keeping your attitude for a week and a month. But when we start dragging on three months, five months, six months, nine months, it's hard now. So the kids that have been dialed in, man, God, God bless you. Like, good for you. But the key to doing that is is basically being present, being the power of now. So I was just saying that that's a, kind of the first step of mental toughness. And creating daily habits is is finding, not looking at what could have been or what happened in the past because it just there's just literally nothing you can do about it except you can look on it and reflect. But you just don't want to do that too long because I always find like if I look back, it's typically negative or no, it's either negative that I look back and I think I could have did I could have done yeah. a lot better. Could have should have what is. Or yeah. I'm looking back and I'm looking at it from a, the, a wrong angle saying, look at how great you were. Yeah. It doesn't matter because today's a new day. Yeah. And then when we look at the future, so I'm just talking about hockey players in the COVID situation right now, but this would be, this would apply any time. So if we look at the future, well, when are we going to play? What, like, is the, am I going to get drafted? Am I, uh, is this, is that, what if, what if, you know, if, if, if and butts were, if and nuts were can- candy and nuts, I forget how it goes. We'd all have a Merry Christmas. <laughs> if and butts were candy and nuts, we'd all have a Merry Christmas. There's nothing you can do. Yeah. It's just nothing you can do about t- tomorrow. We, I don't know. I might get hit by a bus, so tomorrow doesn't doesn't matter. What you have to always look at is what can I do right now, today? And that's the power of now. That's that's what you call presence. That's what you call being in the moment, and that's how you succeed as a player. In season, in a shift, in a game, in a practice, off season, in a workout, at a party where you want to get out, it's always what can I do now to make myself better. So that was that's what I was writing about, and I think I, I, I think it's really important that uh, we understand that if you want to have success in this game, um, the pressure's taken off when you when you live in the pro- moment because when you actually think about right this second, you can do something positive in your life when you think about it. 
Yeah. He's not dwelling on anything else. Just thinking about what you can do right now. It could be shooting pucks. It could be eating something. It could be having a glass of water. Just something productive will make you a better hockey player. Yeah, th- I, th- I think I got like three things out of that. Just listening to you talk. when You're talking about like being mentally tough. And you said being mentally tough is easy when things are easy. Yes. Right? When things are going well, everything's going in your favor. That's not when mental toughness comes in. Right? Mental toughness comes in when everything sucks, yep. when nothing is going the way that you want. And everything that we're saying here, it, it sounds kind of like cliche, and it is cliche because it's things that you hear a lot, but there, there's truth to it, right? Like, oh, there's total truth to if, it. If, you, if things are good and you're riding high, your confidence is high, you got a, a good place to train, your games are going well and all this stuff, like you're not exhibiting mental toughness when things are are all going great. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the, the mental toughness starts to come in when everything is going wrong, when everything sucks, when you're not having a good game, when you're in a slump, when you can't train properly, when things aren't ideal, when there's no sun outside, you don't have any gym equipment at home. These are when, this is when mental toughness comes in, right? So it's easy to talk about it when, you know, things are going well and you're not in the middle of something crappy, but it's when you're in the middle of something crappy, that's when it shows whether you're, you're mentally tough or not. And, and the other thing, that you're you touched on is it's not about doing everything today or everything all at once right it's about you upgrade your choices you make an upgraded choice on something you're already doing so um one of the things that i remember listening to uh another jordan peterson thing guy that we both like there's there's low-hanging fruit that people don't go for because they think they're too good to go for that so easy example if you're someone who doesn't exercise the easy thing to do is just like start going for a walk, right? Go for a walk every day. Just take 20 minutes, go for a walk. And people think, oh, like that's not enough. That's not going to make a difference. I'm not just going to go walk. Instead, they start P90X2, for example. And they do it for three days and then stop. And buy like outfits and stuff. Yeah, they buy their nice clothes, their cool shoes. They do it for three days, post a couple pictures, and then they're done, right? And it's just, it's not something that's sustainable. So a better strategy is, you know, you make things that you are doing already that you could just upgrade, whether that's spend 10 extra minutes shooting pucks after practice or at home, or instead of eating the bag of chips, eat a bag of the veggie chips, right? Still chips, not as bad. Yep. And and in th- this way, you, over time, you can, you can build a new routine, a new habit that's just an upgrade from what you already did. And then over time, it's, you know, you talk about saving your money, compound interest. It's the same idea, right? The more you upgrade your choices, the easier it is to upgrade choices. And then over time you look back and it's like, holy crap, I've done all of these, I've made all these changes and I didn't really notice I was making them at the time. Cause I was always picking the easy thing that I was willing to do. Yeah. You know, does that make sense? Yeah. It makes total sense. Like, like when you said that about the low hanging fruit. So yeah, you could s- for example, getting in shape. Like, let's just say you're a hockey player right now, and you're just haven't you've, you've been depressed, and you you you're just like, I don't know if it's gonna, you know, I know I got to get back because off seasons are hard for guys, so I know to get get back at it, but I just don't feel like it. Like, actually, the low hanging fruit of going for a twenty minute walk is actually really beneficial because yep. you cannot push a car small um a parked car. You just take you put it in neutral and you start pushing, it starts going, and once it starts going, it goes. You can't put you can't push a start, but if you if you move the twenty minute walk, like that Jordan says, he goes, it's not nothing, it's actually yeah, something. It is something, and something leads to something more. Right. So b- by getting that engine moving, of taking that twenty minute walk, especially a hockey player, it's probably gonna end up being more than twenty. It'll probably lead to something else, probably that day because of the mentality of what a, a hockey player is. Yeah, but the key is to do it again tomorrow. And low hanging fruit, yeah, it gets it gets the ball moving, and now you're creating a habit again, and that's it's very important because, I mean, I've done it, where oh, I'm not going to do that. It's like it's not enough. Like, like look at me, yeah, I'm way better than that, right? Yeah. I'm not going to stretch because what's stretching is like wasting my time. Yeah, till you look at Dalton Prout move like a gazelle because he took the time on a daily basis to do the little things that no one else would ever see or care about, yep. but it adds up to something big. So, yeah, it's it's not about uh, shooting 300 bucks tomorrow. It's about getting off the butt, off your butt and shooting some. 
Yeah, like do something. Yeah. Right? Do something. And yeah. and especially if in a time like right now when there's really nothing you can do, like you said, right? And when I say there's nothing you can do, nothing in the sense of what you would normally be doing, right? Yeah. I can't there's no ice, right? There's no war, there's no gym I can go to. In Canada. Yeah. Right? For where us right now in yeah. Ontario. So yeah. there's there's the the norm of what you would be doing right now in January for a hockey player is gone here. Yeah. You can't do it. Yeah. But that doesn't mean there's not other things you can do. Yeah. Right? That doesn't mean pack it in and you know sit on the couch and yeah. because it the time is gonna, it doesn't nobody knows how much longer it's going to be like this. But we're it's going to be done at some point, yeah. right? Yeah. And then when it's done, if you sat around the whole yeah. time, everyone will see. Yeah. And mo I think most people will have done that. They will have done not much kind of sat around maybe if i know shot human a nature yeah right maybe shot a couple pucks and that's yeah. why it's you know going back to what you're talking about mental toughness like if you can be the kid that that does just something every yeah. day you're doing yeah. something and and that's another point that you were talking about like success is is daily you know yeah, it's daily. just every day doing something yeah. you're going to come out of this with an edge yeah you know yeah it's um you know i had a long talk with charlie about it. daily you know we have a great con a great thing going um anyways he had a couple teams reach out to him and uh he was jacked just so far just so pumped he feels like things are gonna happen and I, I feel that too um so he was you know the brain goes to the positive you know this will be great if they draft me if blah 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 and i'm like yeah so you let him ride the high but i always said like son you understand though this is going to happen and i hope it hope you're better than that. Not not better than that. Hope you get more opportunity. But I said, you know, there's a shit storm coming. I said all this stuff about moving to the next level. I said it's like a, it's the equivalent of a pee wee playing minor midget hockey. I said that's that's that big of a jump. It's it's a huge jump. And I said you realize that the, you, they might love you if they draft you, and they might love you as a hockey player, but they probably don't think you're going to be a good hockey player your first year. It's gonna t so he's like, how many years do you think? So it doesn't matter, but I said, you're probably by your third year, you'll be a good hockey player in that league, but no sooner. I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. I doubt it, though. Like, this, this is the numbers. Yeah, you're just playing the stats. I said, you, you have to understand, you've got some good people around, but you will be going through the tough times. Because we talked about, right, most most kids that get drafted, like if they get drafted higher, move to the higher levels, they probably were the most uh, most points on their team. Uh, they got the most minutes on most minutes of ice on the team. They're the go-to guy on their team, so they're not used to having someone take it away, and that's a mental toughness thing. I've seen guys crumble because oh. crumble, oh, yeah. crumble because they weren't uh, they weren't mentally tough to take it. And they didn't understand well, the it process. Happened, I know it happened to me. I'm sure it happened to you at some point oh, too. Oh yeah, you're, 100%. you're riding the high. Your confidence is through the roof. You're the go-to guy. You're scoring all the goals. You're getting yeah. all the points. Yeah. And then you come onto a team where they already have their top three. Yeah. You know. They yep. they don't they three don't, years older than you. Yeah, they don't necessarily need you. No. Right? They're looking yeah. at you to be a guy later. Yeah. And if you can come in and jump into a, a top six role, like you are by far the exception of oh, a yeah. kid going into the OHL. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So that's something that yeah. talking with, like you said, talking with Charlie about, like that's something that they, they gotta yeah. be ready for. Yeah. When I said like there's no easy there's no shortcuts now, right? Like you could probably get away in minor midget major bantam of uh, and he's, I'm not saying he doesn't, he, uh, he's, he learned a lot from lacrosse. He learned that there's offense and defense and defense is equally as important as offense. So he's learned how to play a D side, but I said like, you can get away a little bit with maybe a lackadaisical back check right now, or not stopping on a puck and, you know, flamingoing once in a while. Like no one's really going to say much in minor midget. They might, you might get a little bit of trouble, but it's next level. You, you, that has to be, it has to, it has to happen. You have to take, so especially breaking into the league, you're going to have to take the details that suck, th but they don't suck. They make you a hockey player, and you have to hone that, uh, hone in so tight on those so that you become become a rel reliable player. And um, that's where your reward is going to be when you do the little things. So we had the, we had that long talk uh, Sunday again because um, I just I want him to be prepared for because it's coming. Oh yeah, and I just hope you know we he's surrounded by so many good people and we talk like men every day and he he thinks he knows but <laughs> yeah well i remember when your heart's broken when you're playing and you're crying in places you never thought you'd cry yeah. 
and you felt the lowest of your low, like, and I'm dead serious about that, then then you'll know. Yeah. It's easy to, like, again, it's easy to talk about it, but when you're actually in the middle of it, in the muck. Oh, yeah. It's a different world. Well, I remember. No like, one cares. Well, just, yeah, like one story. Exactly. No one cares. And that, like one story, I remember my first year junior. It was the same, same thing. doesn't matter where you play junior. If you're playing at any high level, it's going to be the same thing. You come in as the first year guy. Yeah. You're not the go-to guy. Sorry. No. Right? For the most part. Yeah. And I came in my first year and I was an offensive player. And that was a role that I came from the year before. And my coach at the time, I'll never forget it, man. I went, I went 12 games without getting a point. And I went from, I was, I don't know if I was second line or whatever. I was fourth line, barely playing. And I, he was going to start scratching me basically was where I was at. And I remember he pulled me into, he pulled me into his little office and he said, Hey, so like, what's, what's going on? Like, and this is not something that you should be expecting from your coaches. This yeah. is something that I think was just an exception because my coach was awesome and I had a good relationship with him at the yeah. time. But I'm not saying like your coach is going to do this because he probably won't. I was just lucky that my coach did this. But he pulled me and he said, what's going on? Like, how come you're not, you're not putting out? You're not, it seems like you're not really checked into what's going on or whatever. And, you know, I threw all the excuses at him. Like, oh, I don't feel like I'm playing with good players. Like, I'm not getting any opportunity. It's hard to get in the game when I'm on the bench for so long. Blah, 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 right? Yeah. And uh, he said, okay, well, I need you to know that you're going to be out of the lineup if you keep going the way that you're going. So what you should start to think about doing, which no one had ever said this to me before, and talk, you talking about, you know, doing little things, it's like you need to find something else to do that makes you valuable so that I can keep you in the lineup. And whether that's make sure you get every puck out. I was a winger. So get, get every puck out on the wall, fight somebody, hit somebody, make sure you're finishing every check around the ice, make sure you're making good passes, you're back checking hard, blocking shots, do something else that makes you valuable. Because if you're not putting up points and you're not valuable in some other area because of the little things that you do properly, you're not going to play. Yeah. And, and mentally, when you're a kid that's used to being the point guy, that's a tough shift to make, right? Yep. And that's probably going to happen. You know, it's gonna so if you don't, if you're not doing those little things on the daily, not just in your own life, like away from the rink, but at the rink too, like those little things, like the success is daily, do things that make you valuable and, and make you somebody that your coach wants to have in the lineup all the time, or they can't say no, they can't not put you out there. They can't afford to not put you out there because even if you don't score, you make great passes, you get yeah. the pucks out, you block shots, you do these other things, right? Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, it's it's critical. So we were watching the World Juniors uh, over the over the Christmas break, and um, again Charlie and I were talking, and we went over his goals in hockey because he said, "Oh, I wa Dad, I want to play for the Canadian team so bad." I said, "Okay, like everybody does, right? Thirty million people in Canada, thirty million people want to play for Team Canada." Yeah. <laughs> so what do you mean by that? And he goes, "No, I I I, I want to play there." I said, okay, cool. So let's, what's, what's your goals in hockey? I know, but we do this because it's, it's such a good exercise. The more that you have your goal, your vision in front of you, the less the problems are to you. The less that the dream is, the bigger the problem. So yeah. right in front of the camera. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's really important to keep the dream big because that's your motivating factor all the time, right? So he was saying, that, well, I want to play in the NHL. And so I said, what, what age do you want to play in the NHL at? And he said, well, so we went through a couple scenarios and we decided that 22 would be an awesome age to, pl to make it to the NHL. I said, okay, so there's uh, that's seven years from now. What about, uh, so the junior team, you'd be about 18, 19 years old. Let's say 19 years old. Uh, what's your next goal is you want to play on under 18, under 17. Wants to get drafted and play in the OHL. So we worked backwards. We reverse engineered, a word that you love because you're an engineer. <laughs> we reverse engineered the time frame and what he needs. So we ordered him a journal. It just came in the other day. So it was important that we did this because without seeing, like seeing is believing. And if he could, I said, so now what you have to do is, because this is seven years is, is, it's not short, but it's not long either. It's like, it's, it's right there. It goes by quick. So I said, what we have to do is we have to measure that out. Like where you want to be at that point, we've got to bring it back to what today, take the power now. What do, what do I have to do today? And we have to, we have to look at your schedule for the month, dial it down to a week. And then now when you look at your schedule, you're going to say, because this is what these are. So this is, it comes back to that slight edge. If you don't do this, then you're all over the map, right? So we had to dial in. Okay. So we have school. So what, is there anything we could do before school? So Dalton had him, 
uh, calling him every day. They were calling each other every morning at seven or eight o'clock. I forget what time it was to make sure that they, he got on a bike and it wasn't to get in condition. It was to do, to start doing something hard every day. So every morning he was getting on the bike and then he would do his school in between school. He would, um, you know, go for a walk with his mom just to get some fresh air. Then he'd come to the gym. But anyways, we dialed out cause there's no hockey right now. What you, what are you going to do? When are you going to shoot your pucks? When are you going to go for a run? When are you going to do push-ups? So we got his whole schedule mapped out so that he can actually see that he's doing something. So it creates a daily habit for him. And it's been great because he's shooting pucks very, very consistently, doing his workouts like super consistently. And But what it, the other thing it did is it, it, it shed. like So he's, he's got his girlfriend now, and uh, she's a great girl and stuff. But it's like, okay, now we have to manage that time too can't just because what will happen is if we don't manage the time then his girlfriend will say well uh, why don't we do this today and then if he's not dialed in he's going to do that because you got to be mature enough see the thing is about being a hockey player is you have to be 25 years old at about 14 you have to be mature because it's a one one career that you don't have time to piss around it's not it's not like like most sports where you go you you, number one you are going to college before you get drafted or you play pro Hockey's a whole different game. At 16, you, you, you're starting to make big decisions. Yeah, you're treated like a grown-up at 16. Yes. Yeah. So we had to dial that in. So the, the, the point that I'm saying that is that we had to re, uh, reverse engineer this thing to show them the, the importance. But it's also to keep them into that slight edge um, mentality, knowing that – See, because here's the thing. This is what I wanted to kind of say about this is that this, this stuff is uh, – the stuff that's going to make you great is not exciting. It's, it's actually mundane. And it's boring. And there's really, on a day-to-day basis, there's no evidence that you're getting better, whether you do it or not. And there's no evidence that you're getting worse if you do it or not. So the, the tough part of this is that's why it's good to see in a journal or in a, in a schedule to see what you're doing every day because you can kind of measure it. But these things are easy to do and they're easy not to do. So we, when you get up, like for the example, when Dalton suggested that he gets up every morning as soon as he gets out of bed and starts doing a bike, 10, 15 minute bike ride, it's uh, it's a challenge because it's not, like you get up and you get on Uncomfortable. a bike. It's not hard, yeah. but it's not easy. And if he goes on that bike day one, two, five, whatever day it is, if he goes on, the difference he's going to make in his life as far as uh, production or getting him close to his goal is pretty much zero. doesn't move the needle at all. And if he doesn't do it, it doesn't move the needle at all. No one, He won't know. He won't notice. And no one else will notice either. Mm-hmm. But this is the point of doing the, the slight edge is that you will not notice it right away. But it, over time, all of a sudden... It's like working out, right? When a kid works out over and over and over and doesn't see results, but then all of a sudden, he his his mom says, "Oh, your uh, your shoulders are getting pretty big, or you're you lost all your fluff." And all of a sudden, there's a little bit of pride, and you go, oh, "Okay, that was two months of work, and that's what happened." So that's what's important about creating daily habits, is they're easy to do, they're just as easy not to do, and they're not something significant that uh, on a daily basis that people are going to know that you did anything and neither will you. Yeah. So that's what makes it hard. Well, we, we, we started talking today about the, the whoop thing and how there's nice metrics you can look at, right? There's, there's no metrics for that, right? There's no metrics for, you know, the, the, that type of mental conditioning that you're doing. So you, you get up every morning you have, and you do, you know, 10 minutes on the bike or a little like 10 minute Tabata or hit or whatever to start the day. Yeah you're not there's you, that's not you can't measure anything there no. there's nothing that you can measure that can gauge your improvement over time with that but what you're going to notice is that it becomes much easier over time to do things that are hard that you don't want to do yeah. because now you've practiced doing it right yeah. and it, there isn't something you can see you're not going to see it in the mirror that you can handle difficult things better there's no there's nothing that you can see that's going to show you you're doing that or getting better at it until you're faced with something that's actually a big deal or really difficult to do and it's just becomes a no factor for you because you're, you have some experience doing hard things, you know, and that's, that's one thing that's, that's really important in terms of, uh, you know, how to structure, um, your goals, for example, right? Like you said, where do you want to be? So, so for any kid, I know you do this with Charlie, but for any other kid, you have your, your end point in mind, right? And then you're talking about reverse engineering, you work, work backwards to, okay, what's a, what's a, a goal I could have, you know maybe a year before that, two years before that, 
maybe a year before that, and you work all the way back to where you are today. And then you can start to put those things in place like Charlie did. What can I do right now? What what things am I that I have in my control right now can I do that will make a difference to the next closest goal that I just wrote down, right? Yep. And that's how you can structure it. That's an actual, a, a tangible way that any kid can do that. Go get a book that has some line paper in it. Say, okay, where do I want to be in, in 10 years? Where do I want to be in five years? Where do I want to be in three years? Where do I want to be in a year? And then where am I today? Yep. And then you can start to put little things in place. And, you know, kids especially now when they're 14, 15, you have an idea of things that you need to be doing. Yep. You're not lost. You know, there's certain things that you can be doing. And if you don't, if you don't really know, then you have resources that you could ask to get you started. Right. Yeah. So that's, that's a really good way of putting it, you know, reverse engineer and create a structure for yourself so that you can build to whatever it is that you're looking to get, whether it's hockey or anything really. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so some of the daily habits that we want to talk about that I think that I, I would put as the most critical and, and again, these are not exciting. It's not exciting stuff. Um, is going to be sleep, eat, um, shooting, like like some kind of practice that you Skills. implement every day, and then some fitness, mobility, and then work in the mind. So let's start off with sleep properly. Okay, this is a huge thing, guys. And I know if the younger you are, the less that you care about this thing. But oh man, I was so proud of Charlie the other day. He came home, and. Uh, Christine was just saying something to Charlie about, uh, I don't know, whatever, a decision, whatever, whatever. It was all good. He said, yeah, Mom, Dalton told me to do th- do the things that aren't cool right now. And one of those things was going to bed early. And uh, Christine looked at him and said, well, that's really good stuff. Like, what do you mean by that? So he explained. She goes, man, that's good stuff. And um, so, like, the things that you do now are going to pay dividends when you're 25, 30. Which it, what, aren't, what isn't cool now is going to be when you're a um, 30-year-old hockey player, it's going to be the coolest thing ever that everybody wants to be. So Dalton was telling Charlie, he goes, you need to go to bed, and he does a great job of it. But to understand the importance of sleep uh, is so underrated because sleep is a weapon. It's the best medicine there is in the whole world. There's books on it. Everyone should read a couple of sleep books because once you understand the power of sleep, um, it's incredible. That's how you're going to function as a hockey player is number one. Wait, wait, before you keep going, I just wanted to touch on that for the do things that aren't cool thing for, for a second. So the when you're when you're a kid, you know, especially you're a teenager, you're going to high school, um, you know, people start going up. You're, when you're in grade 10, 11, people start, like, the, hanging out at, you know, parties Friday night on the weekends. They're going out and doing stuff and being social and all that stuff. One thing that's great about the circumstances right now is you can't do any of that. Right. So there's no reason to really not be able. So when you're talking about something like sleep, that's a great example. So are you going to stay, you know, on your Xbox or PS5 for eight hours into the night and go to bed at three for no reason when, because you know, you can right now. Yeah. And like, just, just get in a good habit of going to bed at a decent time because nobody can even tell right now. You can't hang out with your buddies right now. You can't go do the things. You're not missing out on anything. Right. Yeah. So it's a great time right now to to start doing these things that aren't you know cool because nobody's checking on you. Yeah. So it's a great opportunity. To to, yeah, it's a great opportunity to get into that habit. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Yeah, no, that's going. that's fantastic. But yeah, so the adult was saying it's not cool to go to bed early. Like, so what we mean by that is like your friends are going to want to stay up. You want to go to parties and again, slight edge, and and you know, easy to do, easy not to do. Something that no one's going to notice. Is it going to hurt you if you go to bed at twelve o'clock as opposed to nine once? Actually, it will, but not for the rest of your life. But that habit of, of uh, consistently staying up later, or trying to find out, you know, or trying to stay up and doing basically useless things instead of getting rest and recuperating and recovering for your next day so you can work out or you can practice or you can play to your optimal levels. Sleep will do that for you. So it's, it's ab- absolutely critical. The other thing is, is yeah, guys, I, I learned this a long time ago. Basically, after about 9, 30, 10 o'clock, there's zero productive things going on in the world. There's nothing out there that, except for trouble or things that'll get you in trouble. So what's the payoff? You go to bed early, you pay a price for a year so that you can make a million dollars a year. I'll take that any day. It's cool to be a millionaire when you're 23. Yeah. Rather than being the cool kid that went to all the parties. Yeah, well, and one thing on the sleep thing in particular, especially for teenagers, there is actually um, some science behind like teenagers do tend to uh, fall asleep later 
Yep. Not because they're choosing to stay up later, just yep. because that their the way that their body's rhythm yep. is, they're going to bed later and they wake up a little bit later. Yep. So, th- what we're we're not saying if you normally go to bed at midnight, you have to s- get in bed by eight thirty now. Like that's not th- again, you don't have to do everything at once and be extreme. It's just if you go to bed at twelve normally, or you go to bed at two in the morning because you like playing video games or whatever, go to bed at eleven, then go to bed at ten, and have have like a good set right? Have a good habit, have good hi- sleep hygiene, like doing the right things around when you're going to sleep so that you can get into that habit. Because when you start to get to the higher levels, if you don't have that kind of habit of, you know, recovery and taking care of yourself already established, especially in terms of sleep, because I'm, how many stories Dalton has told about, you know, you're getting off the plane at 3 a.m., then you got to be at the skate in five hours. And then if you don't have a good habit set up, you're going to struggle. Like it's going to be, it's going to be tough. So that's yeah. one thing, especially as a teenager, I know it's tough because you know, everyone's going to bed late. That's just what you do. It's cool to be up late and all yeah. this stuff. But just like you said, nothing good happens after nine thirty, ten o'clock. So just start to chip away, yeah. get, get to bed at an earlier time. Cause it's, it's something that you need to get, do anyways. You're going to have to do it anyways. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And the game now, like, it's not the it's not 1987 or 1994, yeah. where players are out drinking every night, or not every night, but having a lot of social time. It's a l- different league now. Like a lot of guys, just when they get off the plane, they go and hang out in the room, and they get ready for the next day. Mm. It's not the same yeah. as it used you to be. You won't get so away with it. No, your yeah. rest is critical. So I, I I mean, there's books on that. Um, there's a lot of information you can get on sleep. There's podcasts you can learn on that. And they're very, very, uh, parents really should t- tune into them and understand and start tweaking your kids' uh, uh, sleep habits. It's, it's critical. Yeah, maybe the the one recommendation I know you, you wanted to make before, the, the one book, Sleep Smarter. Mm-hmm. That's a book that um, it's not the most scientific. It's very digestible. So if yeah. you're a kid, easy to read, written in easy language, a little bit of science in there, but it's mostly just tangible things that you can completely understand. And... Uh, It'll it'll just get you in touch with more than just going to bed early. Just some other habits you can do around going to bed. Things like not looking at the screen, make sure your room is dark, like bo- how your body temperature. Just little things that that are are helpful and you can understand. It's not going to be beyond your scope that you might end up latching onto. That could be helpful. Yeah, one thing that you did for Charlie that really helped is he walked into the office one day and you were wearing the glasses. What are they called? Yeah, the blue light blockers. Blue light bl- blockers. And uh, Charlie saw them because he came in because he was at school all day, but they were on the computer and his eyes, he looked like he'd been punched in the head right between the uh, right between the eyes. But he was just staring at the screen so, so long and you explained it to him. And so he asked, Dad, can I have some? I said, yeah, absolutely. So I ordered them, came in a, a day later. And he wears them all the time, and it's actually really, really helped him. So that's something that they can do if you're watch, if you're on the video games, or if you're on the yep. TV, even it. Uh, well, especially it now, your all your classes yep. are yep. online. You're looking at the computer all yep. day. You have Zoom meetings. Yep. Everything's on Zoom. Then you watch TV. Then you're yep. on your iPad. Then you're doing yep. whatever. And and it the reason that it's helpful, especially before you go to bed. But even yep. if you're just staring at a screen for a long period of time, which yep. I know these kids are on out on line for like six hours a day or yeah. something now. That's Charlie. Is. So. If you're staring at the screen for that long, the amount of light getting into your eyes, like it'll start, you'll notice it's, it'll start to give you a headache. Yep. It'll, it'll, you'll feel the, the buzz in the back yeah, of your a eyes. Fog. And especially if you're doing that close to when you go to bed, yeah. it'll keep you up. Yeah. It'll take you two hours to wind down from yeah. that. Right. So something as easy as that, like my brother has a pair, the, the pair that I have actually, Charlie has the same pair. So maybe you know how much they were, but my, my 20 brother, bucks? 20 bucks. Yeah. Okay. So my brother's also got another pair that are 20 bucks. Yeah. For 20 bucks. And yeah. maybe they're not the, the best blue light blockers that exist, but it's just a, one of those, again, talk about the slight edge, just yeah. a little thing, little help thing, you, help you get to bed. Edge off, yeah. Fog. Exactly. Help you get to bed. Yeah. Get you a little bit of, of, of an yeah. edge getting asleep on time. Yeah. Right. So that's just another low hanging fruit thing. Like we yeah. talked about. Right. Yeah. So that's the number one. I was, you, we've got to get our sleep, but now number two is something that you're going to have to do every day is eat eat properly so what's eating properly like listen we're not going to sit here and talk to 14 year olds like you need to have uh, x amount of like go through all your macronutrients and micronutrients and be real yeah. specific about things but i want it to be very simple um be just pay attention to what you're eating and, and ask yourself you know maybe a couple questions uh, like because eating is mostly an emotional thing uh, I took that in a nutrition course that I took. It was it was the first things I talked about was how do you feel? What do you think about? Why are you eating? And uh, I thought it was kind of stupid at first. I'm like, what, what is kind of stupid course is this? I paid a lot of money for this. But the thing was is that when you ask, ask, ask those questions, when, why did you have a beer on Friday night? Well, I used to have a beer on Friday night because 
It was Friday. That's why. So work's done, kind of. It's never done for me, but work's done Friday night. You have a beer on Friday night. So one beer turns into three. Well, why? And, and when you ask the answer the question, is because it's Friday. It's a dumb reason. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and, you know, people have uh, pizza nights on Friday. Why? Because it's Friday or it's pizza night or it's taco too. It's just yeah. because it is. Things but that would, don't make sense. Right. Yeah. But so when we start questioning what we eat and when we eat. So a lot of times you'll be sitting at home and you'll say, uh, you know, you go to the you go to the cupboards or the fridge and you grab something and you eat. And if you ask yourself, why am I eating? Probably one of the answers is because it's not because you're hungry. It's because I'm bored or, or emotional. So if you're emotional, you go to food or booze or something that you go and eat because it occupies, gives you some satisfaction. So that's number one is, you know, ask yourself, why am I eating? And, And number two is kind of ask yourself, is this actually, what's this going to do if I eat this? What's the, so what I'm talking about is nutritional val- value. So basically, if you're, when you're looking at protein, you need to have a sufficient amount of protein in your body. So like basically as a hockey player, you want to get, you know, if you look at the palm of your hand, let's keep it really simple. Yeah, you want to eat three four, three, four pieces of the palm of your hand, size of your palm of your hand of protein. What is protein? Protein comes from something that had eyes before. That's pretty simple, right? If it if it's if it if it can run, if it could fly, if it could swim, it was a protein. And if it came from something from that, it's a protein. If it's been packaged a whole bunch of times, it's not very good for you. But if if it hasn't, then it's good for you. You can eat that. The other thing is your um, carbohydrates. You're gonna have to eat some of that. I'd like to get. I'd like to see people eat most of their carbohydrates through healthy fruits and vegetables. It's not processed. You can keep, measure it, and then you get some fats. Fats are like your oils and butters and coconut oils and stuff, nuts. Those are the those are the things that you want to take a look at. But it doesn't have to be real complicated. Eating when it comes down to eating, if you're if it's processed, so a lot of people would think, uh, okay, well I could get a veggie sandwich from Subway. It's not good because it's like the bread is processed, it's all sugar. The meat has been proven that's not meat. It's just a bunch of fillers and soy and a bunch of junk. Yeah. So you want to have food that is actually real food and eat plenty and often of things that are fruits, vegetables, and protein. The most, that should be the bulk of your food. Will you have pizza? Of course you will because you're a kid and it's fine. Will you have cake and pie and all that stuff once in a while? Yes, but you just want to limit that. The next most important or as most important as all that stuff is you need to drink a lot of water. Get used to the taste of water or and, or throw some, like this is a veggie drink. It's, uh what, what is it, veggie? veggie athletic green, greens. Athletic greens. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we do biosteel and amino acids in our drinks to make it flavorful sometimes, but really we don't, and I, I drink coffee as an adult, but get used to water because that's, it's 90% of your body. Maybe I think it's a little bit more. Um, you have to be hydrated. So if you're sleeping hydrated and well fed, you're, you're healthy. Um, drinking the pops, the chocolate milks and all that stuff. Well, you know, the, actually the secret killer now to me is parents start their kids off on the wrong foot, man. You see the in the morning go, grabbing a coffee in the morning. You see in a lineup when school's out, when school's in, is there's a lineup at, before school starts around Tim Hortons, Canada's Tim Hortons, Starbucks, whatever these places are, and they're buying stuff like cappuccinos and crap of frappuccinos, and uh, you can't oh, pronounce yeah. the names, and they're it's all sugar. A uh, 700 calorie drink, man. Right. Like, so Charlie started. Uh, he wanted to try a uh, iced coffee. Heard they were pretty good at iced coffee. So what's an iced coffee? It's a coffee and ice, Dad. I said, that's all? Yeah. So grab one, sure. You want one? Like, I don't want you on a caffe- caffeinate at all or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so he, he had a couple, and I said, I well, let me taste it. That's like, looking pretty light. <laughs> yeah, so I taste it. I go, that's not just coffee, coffee, dude. Yeah. Yeah. So, but this he's a kid, doesn't know. It's yeah. coffee like, or whatever. He doesn't think about calorie count. Yeah. So I looked. I said, look it up, or we looked at the menu, and it was 180 calories for a medium-sized iced coffee. Yeah. Because there's shit in it. Yeah. And these are the hidden things that are like, so So kids have started off on the wrong path. And I just see it a lot mm-hmm. that they're, they go to school and instead of making lunch at home, which is so simple and so cheap, it's Tim Hortons or it's the little diners and stuff like that where it costs a fortune and you're eating nothing but garbage. So a simple thing like eating food from home. Understanding what you're eating goes a long, long, long way. Well, can you could you talk about food for a while? Well, well, a couple things on that. Like, so the first, well, I don't know which I want to go for. Well, maybe we'll say this. So they're kids, right? And I gave a, I did a little talk with some of the guys that we work out with 
uh, last, I think last week on the weekend or Saturday. whatever. And I gave them a decent amount of like technical information, like you're talking about, like macronutrient stuff, like where it all comes from, why you need to eat carbohydrates, why you need to eat protein, where does fat play into this, whatever, hydration. And because I want them to know the reason why they're being told you need to eat carbohydrates, like yeah. for performance, like what are the reasons all this? And again, it's not to say that you need to go buy a food scale and weigh all your food and be a crazy person, right? If you're into that, hey, that it's it's good for you. If but most kids aren't, and they don't want to do that because they're kids and they don't care. So the same thing, like we we were talking about with little habits, it's just making upgraded choices, right? Try to create an an environment where the good thing to eat is the easy thing to eat, yeah. right? So the good choice is the easy choice. That's the only way this works, right? Yeah. Because if it's in the house, especially as an athlete, you're always yeah. hungry. You just want to eat all the time. Yes, you're gonna eat whatever's there, right? So creating a good eating environment the issue that most kids are going to have you're talking about eating at home making food at home and all this stuff is the parents yeah so i know we're going to do another talk on this later when we're talking about this topic specifically but for for the parents out there and and for the kids like something that they can do is it's it's tough because you're a kid and to have the maturity to do this i know it's hard but s sitting and talking to your parents about it and being like hey like i need to make sure that i'm eating properly even if you don't really know what that means, just having the conversation, like I need to make sure I'm eating properly. Like, can we try to make some better choices when you guys are doing grocery? Cause kids, the kids aren't buying their own food. They're not going to the grocery store. They don't have a lot of control over There's almost zero. Control. Yeah. Right. Over what's in the house. So exactly. Right. So, so one of the things that they can do, and I know, again, and I know it's tough cause you're young is to have the conversation with your parents. Like I'm trying, there's like, I need to eat a certain way because I want to perform a certain way. Yeah. Like, what can we do? Can we do something about this? Like, can we try when we go shopping, can we look for some better things or whatever and just bring attention to it? That's a, that's a f good first step. Right. And then from the parent side of it is you need to understand that if your kid wants to be an athlete, then there's a certain way that they need to eat. Right. And you might not like that way. Right. But the bottom line is, is it's, it's better for them, but it's better for you too, yeah. you know? So that's something that you can, you can start to pay attention to. And, and, you know, the way that I wrapped up the, my talk with them, as I was saying, just that, I know you don't have a lot of control over this, but do the things that you can do, make the upgraded choice you can make, have those conversations with your parents and try to get it set up. So it's a little bit easier. You know, you don't have to, like you said, you don't have to eat like a freaking robot and be a machine when you're 15 and just want to go hang out with your buddies or whatever. But doing those things to, to make those first steps. Yeah. That's what's important. Yeah. Know? It's huge. One thing that, uh, we went through with my, went through with my wife, as I said, uh, I was explaining to her how, when I'm most dialed in is I have a way to eat and the way I eat is I have my food separate. <laughs> it sound weird. It's not a weird thing. I have to have my food in order for me to measure it and to be on point and to, to know how much I've eaten and to know that I've eaten healthy by eating my protein. So for a while we were making a lot of uh, rice bowls, like, you know, Chipotle. Yeah, yeah. We make our own homemade. Like the energy health. bowls. Yeah, yeah, energy bowls and stuff. And they're delicious. And I like stir fries and stuff like that. Like it's delicious. But the problem with it is I found that it's hard to measure. And for me, coming from a household where it's like, you better eat or else, because that's all there is. And we rush to eat and, you know, stuff our face. Yeah. So I had to learn how to eat properly, you know, in my early 20s. So I have to have it. So like if I'm having, uh, let me go back to the rice bowl. So we were, we were for a while because they're so good and easy to make and it's all healthy, but I was overeating because I was, because I'd take a big bowl of, you know, the meats all the meat, rice or veggies or whatever it is you're putting in there is all in one bowl. So you pile it in there and you have no idea what you're, you can only guess. And it's a, and if you're guessing you're, you have no yeah. idea how much you've eaten. Yeah. So I had to ask my wife, like, like, let's really focus on changing it and keeping meals really simple. So what we did, and it, and it just works so much better for me. Take meat, you make your meat, you make your veggies, and a starch if you need it, or a salad if you need it. And it's separate. It's not. I, I'm not the guy that you can't touch his food. I'm just saying, yeah. I like to know the one, two, three, and I I can control my portions that way. Right. So I know I look at my plate and I got that much that much meat, okay. And I and and then it's and it's also a habit to say, okay. I, I need more. No, don't worry about it. Just have a palm full of uh, protein. Have uh, like, so maybe a sweet potato or whatever it is and, and a salad and your veggies over here. If you do that, 100%. Yeah. And you, you, you'll be full and you'll be satisfied. And yeah. it's, it's healthy, guaranteed. You can't go wrong with that shit. Well, well with, with food especially, the more, the more complicated the dish is, 
the more you don't know what you're eating, right? right? Well, add the sauce. Add yeah, the sauce. right. It's, it's, so, you don't so, need it. You don't and, need it. Yeah, and, and like you said, so the, the re- you keep things separate so that you can actually visually see how much is on my. So if you're like I said, you're a kid, you gave the palm measurement as a thing. So if you have, I was saying this to you earlier, if you have a palm, a piece of chicken that's the size of your palm, yeah. it's probably six to eight ounces. Yeah. You're getting forty to fifty grams of protein. Yeah. Great. So you got the piece of chicken on your plate. You see, you know that. Yeah. If it's chopped up, mixed with rice and veggies and all this stuff, yeah. now you don't know. Am I overeating rice and undereating protein? Am yeah. I? Do- and it's not that you need to track it precisely, but you want to be in the ballpark so that you know you're eating properly, yeah. right? Especially for performance, it's yeah. really, really important. Like if you are, if you're not eating properly, yeah. that was one of the biggest downfalls for me. Is I didn't know when to eat yeah. certain things or what to eat around yeah. performance. I had no idea. No yeah. one told me. Yeah, most people right? don't. Yeah. So Dalton said a really good thing the other day. Because because he looked at me, he goes like, and, and you're like this. You said the same thing. He said you don't when you talk because you're talking to your family about it. When you talk about eating and fitness, you don't want to sound like you're preachy. Oh yeah, and I don't either. Huge problem. Yeah. But the pro- the difference is like Dalton said it. He goes, he goes, Andy. When you grew up, you didn't have the wealth of information that we have. Because if you actually, you actually can't care about nutrition to not know about it now. Yeah. Because, but the younger generation will look at the older generation and actually tell them how to eat and how to exercise. But there's just a wealth of knowledge. Yeah. And you're right. Like when I grew up in the '80s, you just ate. You just ate. Yeah. I mean, you knew Details some things that were healthy, but yeah. it didn't matter. And the rules changed. There's the the pyramid, the food pyramid. Oh, it was yeah. freaking backwards, by the way. I would never eat like that in a day yeah. of my life. <laughs> I was I was choosing to gain forty pounds. Well, that's why everyone's, you know, having a weight problem. Yeah. Is metabolic dysfunction in yeah. north america now 100 <laughs> percent, man it's it's unreal yeah. but anyways yeah it's about keeping it simple but the point of this is is daily habits be mindful of what you're eating eat as much as you can that that is good wholesome whole food that uh, hasn't been packaged and if you do 90 percent of your eating and just pay attention to that then you're on the right track yeah the before you go to the next one the one thing that the rule of thumb kind of that i gave them or, or it's more like a philosophy like your nutritional yeah. philosophy should be you want to eat single ingredient whole foods as consistently as possible yeah, that's that's basically the frame especially as an athlete if you're yeah. an athlete that's for anyone but especially for an athlete yeah. if you want to perform yeah. that is that is the philosophy yeah. and single ingredient pretty straightforward it doesn't have a bunch of crap in it if there's yeah. an ingredient label on it yeah. probably not the best yeah. right whole foods or if you're eating something and the actual thing you're eating is about fourth on the uh, ingredients that's bad. Yeah. Yeah. Right. If there's more than five ingredients, that's one thing. And if, if the main reason you're eating the food isn't until number four yeah. on the ingredient label, yeah. not great. Yeah. Right. So that's one thing. And then whole foods, that's another straightforward thing. Like it's, if an can, egg, yeah. Did it come chicken? Yeah. Did it come from the ground? Yeah. A donut. Yeah. Is do not you recognize what it was originally? Yeah. Right. And if you can do that, then that's probably yeah. a be, uh, one of the better choices that yeah. you can make. Right. Yeah. And that's that is the nutritional philosophy: single yeah. ingredient, whole foods, as consistently apo- yeah. as possible. Gatorade is not. A, um, doesn't grow on trees. No. Um, ga- uh, granola bars do not grow on trees. Like it's process yeah, and, it, and it's and it is tricky too like this is another thing just before again before we move on no, it's okay. when you, you talk go, all day about this. when when you go to the when you go grocery sh- you know this is, is actually a good thing that ki- kids could do like go grocery shopping with mom and dad a couple times right go through the aisles and actually see what they're they're buying take a look like take an interest look at the ingredients of what you're getting right because you know the labels especially are tricky like oh good however many grams of protein low fat whatever, right? Yeah. Energy bar, like all these flashy colors and words and whatever, just because it says something on the label doesn't mean yeah. that it is what it is, right? Yeah. If there's a label in general, it's probably not the yeah. the best thing to be eating, right? So that's another good thing that you could do is actually yeah. to, like take an interest in what you're consuming and look at it. What is this? Like, yeah. what am I actually eating, right? Yeah. Well, another thing, we'll just keep yeah. milking this. Oh, Beat I, this horse my, to One of my death. favorite things Beat to talk about. Beat the dead horse here. Yeah. Uh, real valuable, we Charlie took a started taking an interest in eating or uh, eating <laughs> in cooking in cooking. Yeah, yeah. What was the first? He made a stuffed chicken the first one that he did. So he started doing this about uh, three four months ago. So he made a stuffed chicken. I think I showed you the pictures. You and Dalton. It was impressive. Like he came up with ideas, and he's learning how to cook. So he he's done that. He's made homemade burgers. Um, he's made uh, chicken parm. He's done. He's make he made a. a amazing salmon last week but he t- does all the things and he's got to think about the nutrition and all that kind of stuff this is not we didn't encourage it at all mm-hmm. he just him and, and his girlfriend one day wanted to start cooking for us 
beautiful. The only problem is he doesn't know what the dollar amount is. Yeah. So like, <laughs> Christine goes, what are you making next week? He goes, oh, steak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably wants a T bone yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah. Like it was, 150 so bucks. Seems like okay. You don't really understand the dollar value yet. Yeah. But wait, hey, hey, we're making process. Go but ahead. but the the thing with that though, t- we're talking about taking interest in cooking. So one of the things that one of the first things I really needed to learn when I moved away, my first billet house, yeah. was how to cook. And not talking bad about my billets, they were awesome people. Yeah. But they didn't eat like athletes, oh, yeah. right? Who does? And so the amount of time, like I was on the phone. All the time. My mom, phenomenal cook. Yeah. I was on the phone with my mom a couple times a week. How to use the oven, how to use these appliances, yeah. what temperature, how do I make this thing that you made before, whatever. And like, what a tool because you go, you're in your kitchen now and you can, you can actually be in control of what you're eating. You actually can make things now, yeah. right? Which is huge. And you're probably going to have to learn it anyways. Well, the thing, like Dalton talks about it all the time. Moving away, he goes, you had to get resourceful because like you think, like you always think about hockey players making five million dollars a year those are only some of the guys yeah when you're playing pro it doesn't mean you're playing in the nhl you could be playing in the american league when you're playing in the american league, you take a zero off your paycheck take a zero off your paycheck and pay some taxes you're living like a normal dude so you're not living you're not going out having steak and stuff every night because yep. you can't afford it so you have to be resourceful and dalton was saying at that one point in that when he was in springfield or whatever his first year as a pro he ate a lot of eggs oh, uh, yeah. he found a lot of ways to make eggs and stuff but you have to do it yourself so yeah like just another tool like you, if you think you're kid or if you think you're ready to move away, what if you go to a billet? Like you go to a billet, you yeah. might have a billet that cooks perfect for you. God, that'd be nice. Yeah. Well, Probably not. Well, the, and the other thing I want to highlight too that you said though is, is now the access to information. Yeah. You can, you can Google. I don't care if you're 12 or 40, you can Google at any time. How do I make this? Yeah. And it will tell you yeah. step by step yeah. oven at this temperature. This is how you prepare the meat. This is how you prepare the veggies. This is how long it takes here you go. Here's your spices. Here's whatever. Like it's not, and, and it's intim. I can completely understand. It could be intimidating if you've never used the oven, how to use the oven, how to use the stove. I get that, but it spells it out. Try it. You know what I mean? And, and to go along with being a hockey player though. So all these things that we're talking about, sleep, eat properly, cook. These are things that, you know what they're not, you know what the one thing they aren't lazy. Yeah. It takes a it takes an actual effort. Yeah, little so habits, much man. easier if you have a few bucks in your pocket, just go get something, or to uh, uh, let someone do something for you, or to fluff it off. So these all these things are little habits. These little habits that make it better. And as you move forward, the pressure gets higher. The the circumstance people don't care about you anymore. Circumstances get tougher. You better know how to take care of yourself. Yep. So. I, I, yeah, so that that was a default thing. It's not because we're good parents and I'm a good coach and I recognize that my son would get a good, valuable lesson in learning how to cook properly. He took a liking to it and I actually learned how valuable it is for him yep. because, hey, in a year from now, he could be living with someone. Uh, can't cook. Can't cook. Yeah. Cooks like shit. Yeah. Uh, gives him five bucks to, like, maybe he's going to have to go buy eggs and make something instead of, you know, yep. don't know what's going to happen. So it's better to cover all your bases because, you know, at the end of the day, you want to cover as many bases as you can, or and if you can't, if you don't know what bases that you need to cover, when they come up, you're able to deal with them. Yep. Because the last thing you want to do is sit there and starve, or sit there and write, well, I don't know how to do laundry, or I, I, I uh, well, my dad didn't take me to the gym, so I don't know what to do. I, yeah. Well, I don't know. My mom, you never yeah. got me up in time, so yeah. I, I slept in. Like, yeah. It's not no one's problem. It's your yeah. freaking problem now. Yeah. You, right. Yeah. There's no one's gonna baby you and 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 hold your hand and take you everywhere. Like you have to figure it out. So it's a harsh reality, but yeah, whatever. Yeah. The same with like, like the last thing with food is like, sometimes it doesn't taste good. Who cares? You'll get used to it. Just eat it. You know, if you well, have to put ketchup ta- and all the shit on it. ends up tasting good though. That's the thing. A- oh, after a while, when you're used yeah. to eating everything, salt and yeah. sugar and butter and yeah. all this stuff. Yeah. It's going to not, it's not going to taste the same as a freaking cookie, man. Yeah. But after a while it, it starts to taste good because you feel good. Yeah. And that's what yeah. ends up being the difference yeah, is you no feel normal. much better eating this way. So it tastes better and your body yeah. wants that, yeah. you know? Well, I, got, I told you, I got it. When I grabbed my coffee this morning, got to the office, opened it up. They put sugar in it. Yeah. Almost puked it right, yeah. out right there. No, yeah. thanks. Yeah. Yeah. No, thanks. Yeah. Gross. Yeah. So I think um, we beat that one to death. Yeah, we beat <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, The next thing I'm just going to kind of lump in, is, uh, it's, it's just your skill set or your, your working out is you have to do it. You have to do it and, and, Sometimes you don't have the perfect plan. It's okay. But, like, you you know that you need to be shooting pucks. So shoot pucks. How many a day? It doesn't matter. Shoot pucks. I would shoot pucks with a purpose, but it's just a daily habit. Get get your puck shot. Do your stick handling. 
whatever skill it is, maybe it's your plyometrics. I, I don't know what it is, but it is. One of the things that Dalton did was uh, he introduced to us his rice bucket, and I love it because um, here's a guy that, you know, always on the cusp of maybe getting sent down. Just oh, maybe, maybe. So he always had to find ways to make himself better. So when he was playing uh, his first year pro, he found that he had time and uh, the guys that he was living with um, played a lot of video games. So he was like, had a lot of time on his own or when he watched TV, he's like, okay, I got a few minutes here. So what he did is he, went bu- he found a bucket of rice because he was rehabbing a broken hand from a fight. And it was to strengthen his hand. So what he would do is with the rice, he'd put his hand at the bottom, he'd just scoop rice and, and grind the rice for reps in yeah, c- during sorry, commercials. Sorry, but before you, just so people get, get a visual. So he got a big Ten bucket. Pound. A big, big bucket. bucket, like some you'd use to wash your Five car or whatever. Or ten gallon, yeah. whatever it is. Fifteen pound bag of rice or whatever. Ten, ten, ten pounder pound. bag of rice. Yeah. Dump the whole thing in there, yeah. and then that's what you're talking. Get your digging hand in to the bottom and start just grabbing rice and digging and twisting to strengthen your forearms. And uh, it, w- it it strengthened his hands a lot. But he said his grip strength after doing that was incredible. But if you think about when you're shooting pucks, it's not the big wind up. It's that's the end result. It's just it's a, a it's a it's a wrist curl basically. It's a wrist, snap. Yeah. yeah. So stronger, like the Popeye forearms. So it was a simple thing. You do that every night in between commercials and just do reps of that. Yeah. To, that is not rocket science. And it's, you could do the. It's wrist not curls. really demanding either. That's no, the thing. no. But what it is is it's easy to do and it's easy not yeah. to do, and it's mundane. And no one will know if you did, and no one will know if you didn't. But it's a thing that will have invaluable and infinite um, rewards. Yeah, yeah. The return is huge on so, that little thing. Yeah. So my my point is. You don't have to do that. You should, actually. If you don't, after knowing this information, if you don't do it, you're dumb. Yeah. If you want to be a hockey you know you're dumb. Yeah. If you know that this will make you stronger, your shot will be better without ever working your shot. If you don't put your hand in a rice bucket and grab it and squeeze it, you're just dumb. You don't want to, be, you don't yeah. want to get better. That's all. Yeah. Um, but So it doesn't have to be that. But what else could it be? Could it be sit-ups? I don't care. It's, it's about doing the habits. Do you want to have a strong core? Do you want to just do squats in between? Like finding something within you that you're going to do different than anybody else that is going to make a difference. And mundane, but like who's the uh, Herschel Walker? Ever, you know Herschel? Do you know who no. Herschel Walker is? Maybe. Okay, so he played in the NFL. He was. Oh, in, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he was like, uh, he played in Georgia State running back, and he was like superstar football player. And the story goes that he never did a weight in his life. I doubt it. But I would doubt that. I would but. doubt it, but let's just say he didn't. Or he did maybe he did l- less weights, less sure. weights, whatever. Yeah, but he he claimed that he uh, he did push ups, sit ups, and uh, uh, every commercial he would do basically thousands a day, all the way through NFL. He ended up being doing some ballet to for his uh, core and stuff like that. But my point is, is that he he did what he he did what he could with what he had, and he did it regular, and he is freaking jacked. He did MMA too. Uh, great athlete. So the the point of this is that do something every day that makes yourself better, right? Um, uh, yeah. So you got. So here's your choices, right? You're sitting at home. You got. You could play video games or watch TV, and that's fine. But make sure that you do something in between. That there's there's some uh, or do something for your brain. Even just a little habits yep. that get you going. Another huge thing is, um, uh, and I'm I'm not talking about practice and all this stuff. I'm just talking about little things that'll make you better outside of what you what your what your, yeah, your minimum, baseline baseline yeah. what you're asked to do. Yeah. Uh, stretch and mobility. Um, you know, so when you're at home, just a real simple thing, right? So Charlie uses my app, my Echelon app that I have a bike that have yoga and stretches. So he, not every day, but he's been getting more in a habit of buckling down and doing 10 minutes, 15 minutes of stretching. It's it's great. So. You know, you're sitting there anyways, and the thing is, this is the mindset. Do I want to be good at watching TV, or do I want to take this time and be productive? We live in the now, and how can I make myself a better hockey player? If you watch Dalton Prout in our gym, he's just mobile. Like, he is so mobile, and it's impressive. But that wasn't, that didn't happen overnight, and uh, he's got thousands, uh, oh, not thousands, he's got hundreds of stretches that he does, or mobility movements that he does, that we've learned a lot from, and it just makes you a more functional athlete. I mean, you just move the proper way. Yeah. So, you know, learn to do some mobility. So that's that's another thing. Or you could just sit there and not, right? Like if you want to be, and I'm just saying it as a hockey player, If you know, and I, I say that to people in business, you know, you could work as hard as I did or, or not. Don't expect the same business, mm-hmm. right? Like it just is what it is. Um, and then the, the probably the, the one that I, I, it's probably just as important as anything else we've talked about is... Um, we have to do things for our brain. 
We have to. Um, the game is is uh, you know mental toughness and stuff, but w- it's not. I'm not even just talking about that. Is that we have to keep our our uh, the six six inches in between our ears focused on um, being strong. So it could be just watching a lot of hockey so that you actually understand. Like most kids right now watch highlights or watch clips of hockey or they watch the YouTube things, but they actually don't understand the game of hockey. So they haven't watched it enough. They don't know what the flow of the game is going to be. Uh, they don't know why that happened or they don't see a good play defensively because they just don't watch enough. So watching hockey would be a, a big one. But then learn from hockey players or the hockey world. So and, and, and make your mind better. So learning from the hockey world just simply means like read a book that like for when I grew up, I, I used to read every book on uh, hockey. Wayne Gretzky, the Sutter brothers, John Beliveau, um, what's his name? Guy Lafleur. I j- had all these books. I, j- I didn't know him. I just was interested. But every book I got something from. I think I mentioned it one time. Guy Lafleur used to get up in the morning and run 10 miles, sneak into a sneak into a. I forget, uh, an old shit rink, and they used to let him on at 6 o'clock in the morning. He used to skate for hours. Oh, I'm going to try that. Wayne Gretzky used to do that. Oh, I'm going to try that because you get the mindset of a winner. Um, reading little little uh, books, if you can, like just biographies or just something that's going to stretch a little bit, something of your interest. And then, again, if not, let's get into a podcast. And on YouTube, you can watch podcasts of people that are very interesting, and it's a lot better than – then so for some of you might not want to read. Um, so obviously one of the podcasts that uh, I, I want it to, to be for your brain to be good. So one of the podcasts is obviously go to Power Tech and we've got so many different uh, podcasts for the kids to learn from. They're, they're, they're just so good um, on fitness and all kinds of things. But my friend Ian Pulver, he has a podcast. It's called the Hockey News Storytellers. And it's awesome. So he had Nick Kiprios on. And I I used to, I played hockey against Nick in junior one year. Not that he would remember me. I was just a little punk. Um, but, and I, as an, an announcer, like when he was on Sportsnet and stuff, I'm like, he kind of bugs me. Like, he had a thing about him. And he he kind of bugged me. I don't mean that to be a jerk. It just, he, he did something about him. I just didn't care for the way he presented himself on TV. But Ian, uh, Ian had him on his uh, storytellers, and it was phenomenal. I learned so much, and I was like re- really thankful that I heard it. It was it was great because he he's not a guy that he never got drafted in the OHL, never got drafted in the NHL, and he played junior. He had sixty goals a year for I think two three years. He's one of the highest po- producing goal, points uh, point getters in junior hockey. Was a walk on with. Uh, uh, Philadelphia he went to first but then he signed with Washington had a great career and then he turned all his principles that he learned from hockey into a business career Mm. and it's phenomenal and so Ian just had Scott Gomez on he had someone else on the other day he's really really good and I would really strongly encourage you to listen to that one as well yeah I think uh I just wanted to I want to kind of touch on the why that's important right you're talking about you know I like to call him brain diet right what's your brain diet like and the reason it's important is like one thing that my dad used to tell me and I actually, I really like it is like, you need to be a student of the game, right? You need to be, and it's not just for hockey. It's be a student of whatever it is that you're interested in, right? You need to be a student and people don't like being called a student because they don't like school and they don't like to read because reading is boring and it's associated with school, but it's like read things that you like, Yep. like read something that you're interested in. No one's saying go read stuff you don't like. You know, and if you can't do that, then yeah, podcasts are another another uh, great it's, outlet. And it's a great way. It's not a lazy way. No, it's no, it's not because a lot more people can listen than can read. Yeah. Right. So it is or actually watch a podcast. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it is. If you're gonna, you know, go for entertainment, just try to f- try to use that entertainment time for something that is in a way beneficial. Right. Yeah. And the reason that's imp- that that's important and something that I've realized with myself because I'm a guy that reads all the time too. I love I love reading. It's it's hard enough. You know, you're you're tr- especially in hockey. You're trying to figure out how to make it right. You're trying to figure out what's the right way. Like, right, what's the recipe? Like, what works best for me? Yeah. What should I be doing? And by exposing yourself to all this information and and listening to other people's story and what worked for them and what, t- you might skip a couple steps, figuring out what works for you. You yeah. know, so if you never read a book or you never listen to a podcast or whatever, the the amount of surface area you have to catch, you know, catch a break 
because you heard the right thing or whatever is decreased, yeah. right? So you, you put good things in your head and it works for anything. It's not just hockey. You put good things in your head in whatever area you're interested in because it might allow you to realize things sooner than you otherwise would have, yeah. right? And that's why it's important. That's why it's important to be a student and educate yourself, not in the sense of you need to go to school and you know be in academia and learn from a class. It's not that necessarily. It's just fill your head with things that are of interest to you from people that have done it because it might allow you to skip some steps to get to where you want to go. Yep. And that's why it's important. It's not yep. just do this because it's good for you. There's actually a reason. Yep. And that is the reason it'll help you get to where you want to go faster. Yes. Right. And yes. And, and so I just, as you're thinking of talking about that, I was thinking of a book for kids, not one I'm interested in. So Brian, I'm just using this as an example. Well, let's, let's do it a different way. If I wanted to be a professional hockey player, then I want to know who makes the decisions on what makes a professional hockey player. There's coaches, there's scouts, and there's general managers that pick them. So would it be beneficial to know how a coach and a general manager and NHL players think? I think so. So how do I get that information? you got to knock on their door like what do you do well there's information out there there's podcasts there's you listen to them to see how they think analysts um so for example brian burke has a book out came out at christmas time not sure like i know for a fact it's not for me because i'm not i don't like getting entertained by hockey hockey stories like they're they're old to me but if i'm a hockey player i think it's probably a good list or a good read why because he's probably going to get, like, I know one of the things he talked about, I've heard him talk about, was his worst interview in hockey that he's interviewed, like, in the interview process for drafting kids. It was Nail Yakupov. So he went first overall. But so he he said when he came in, he was arrogant and didn't really feel like answering questions. It was kind of like, well, I'm not getting drafted to you, so so what? Kind of attitude. And it was, like, the worst attitude, and Burke told him that, that much, I guess. So my point of that is that, Oh, maybe you didn't know this, but you will get interviewed if you're good enough by a, a general manager or a coach. Oh, they don't like that attitude. Oh, and you learn a whole bunch of th- steps of the process of what a general manager or a coach is thinking because most of us never think that way. So a lot of the times, like in sales, that's something, right? I could tell you how great my product is, but if I don't know what you like or what you want, what does it matter? Right. So as a hockey player, you're, you are a commodity and you're, you're selling yourself. Yep. And people want what they want. And if you present yourself the right way and if you know what they want, then you could play the game. Um, what's you know, it wouldn't hurt a person to read a coach's uh, a coach's book. Why? Well, because they're going to give you insight on players. They're going to get insight on the game that maybe you've never thought of before. And come on, be a hockey player. It's a really good thing to learn. Hockey. Yeah. Right. Um, so those are those are resources, and there's a podcast like that as well. Yeah. Well, the and that's the thing is you don't know what you're going to learn, you know, like you, you might go into reading something or listening to something thinking, you know, what you'll get out of it. And you might be completely wrong and get something else. That's incredibly valuable that you didn't realize would happen. And one stupid example that I like to talk about for me personally, it's so dumb, but there was a book that I read once and it was called, I don't remember why I read it either. I don't remember why I bought it or why I read it, but it was called the life changing, the life changing magic of tidying up. That's what it was called. And it was literally a book about how to clean up, like how to clean up, like how to clean you your room. You were going through a weird phase. Yeah. Like <laughs> I, I don't remember, I don't remember why I bought it. I don't remember what the reason, but there was a reason I was, yeah. I always have a reason for whatever. And so I, I read it. it was the life changing magic of tidying up. And it's literally about cleaning up around you and why it's important to keep things around you tidy and in order. Right. And I remember I read this book. And I might get that book, to be honest with you. So, so th- but this is what happened when I read it. It was such a waste of my time reading it. I was like, this is so stupid. Like, of, and I was, I was already someone who's relatively organized. Yeah. So it wasn't like it, it was anything crazy. So everything it said, I was like, yeah, this is a good way to, to clean your stuff up and you can organize things this way and whatever. And I finished reading the book. And I'm like, wow, what a waste of time. Like, not worth it at all. And then I was kind of reflecting back on it a little bit down the line and one of the things that they said that I didn't realize stuck out to me at the time, but it ended up sticking out to me was that when you go into a room and it's, especially if it's your room, you want to be surrounded by things that you love when you go into that room. Right? So if you go into your bedroom and it's absolutely a chaotic mess, 
and there's tests that you don't want to look at and homework you haven't done and, and the textbooks that you hate and all of this stuff. And you walk into that room and you see these things around you, makes sense, yeah. then it makes you feel like crap. Yeah. You don't like being there yeah. and your body knows it and senses it. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what I ended up taking out of that book that I thought was a complete waste of time and shouldn't have read it. I ended up taking out like when you go somewhere, any room that you have control over, make sure there's only things that you love in there because you go into it and you want to be there. You yep. like, wh- and what a good principle, right? And that's, Fantastic. and that's something for a book about cleaning up, right? So, so from the most ridiculous place that I never would have thought I would get something valuable, I got that out of that book, right? It's great. Even though I thought it was a waste of time. And yeah. so, th- so that's, that's the thing, you know, y- you never know where you're going to find a, a hidden gem. And es- especially if for a hockey player, if you listen to hockey things, the, t- the likelihood of you getting some kind of gem out of it, there's always it, something. Yeah, there's always something that you're going to get, right? And that's why, like I said, you, you're increasing the opportunity for that to happen, right? Yep. Yeah. Well, I love it. That's that's uh, that's awesome. Yeah, there's a ton of books out there. You can look at just leadership. Uh, you, don't, you don't have to go deep, man. There's uh, um, there's a Navy SEAL book. Uh, it's called Make Your Bed. It's a really good. It's uh, What's his name? Mc General. He was a commander of the Navy SEALs. Anyways, he talks about... It was such a life lesson book. Talk, talks about why it's important to make your bed. Number one, it gives you pride. It's the first task of the day. Blah blah blah. But then the rest of the book, it's, it's called Make Your Bed. But it's just all these other tasks that he talks about, and uh, and the trials and tribulations of becoming a Navy SEAL, which is like an ultimate warrior in the in the U.S. Um, the best of the best do it. It's the same principles you would use for hockey. Yeah. It's like so it's so it's the same yeah it's the same as you'll everything get a, you'll, it's, it's you'll success get the, principles yeah you'll get it from everywhere man yeah. just and the more that you it. understand this stuff early the sooner you're going to be and the bottom line is don't feel sorry for yourself you got simple things you can do every day do them if you don't like to do them then it's not going to kill you but it's not going to not kill you yeah um and it's it's they're easy to do and they're easy not to do people aren't going to see your success day by day you won't see su- your success day by day but you have to do them yeah and over time you'll have a lot of success. But yeah. put good things in your mind, man. That's good. Did you have any other things you want to No, I think I'm done up? today. Um, okay, well, uh, you got uh, maybe one or two things you want to leave off with? for. The yeah, no. I just want to leave off with this. Is, is Look into that principle of the slight edge. Of, of Look into the principles of doing daily habits, of uh, – Things that are tough to do and start off with one or two. It doesn't have to be everything, but examine your life a little bit. Examine, I want to be a hockey player. This is the number one thing I want to be. I want to be a hockey player. And that's your decision. And that, now it's up to you to go to get it. And it's not going to be easy. So, what are you going to do to make yourself better on a daily basis? And there's going to be a lot of things, but start with one or two. Yeah. And do it on a daily basis and then, the basis and then increase it. And you're going to see results. But that's that's it. No, that's that's good. That's good. And it'll add up over time. You're right? gonna add up big time. Yeah. Okay. Listen, you, you see it. You've seen it now. Uh, I look at. I have to talk about my son. He's the closest thing to me. I see me every day. He's getting strong, man. Why is he getting strong? Because because he's growing. No. Yes. Yes. Par- partially. But do you see how strong he's getting? It's it's I crazy. Do. I do see. And the reason is because he didn't start off with 285 pounds on his back. He started off with 75. It's that Milos, I, I wrote it down here, Milos from Crowtown. He's the, the wrestler that picked up a baby calf one day, and he did it day after day after day after day till the calf was a bull. It was it, He didn't just pick up a bull. He picked up a calf every day, and he gained a couple ounces every day or a pound a day. And that's what you're doing when you build these habits is you're just strengthening everything on a daily basis, whether it's your mind, whether it's your muscles, whether, whether it's your shot, whether it's your skating, whether it's whatever it is, your eating, your sleeping habits. A, a, a little bit of change every day is, it goes a long way. That's and that's good, all man. I have. That's good. We'll we'll leave it there till next time. Cool.